morning and welcome to Small Caps. I am your host, Jess Holland, and today I have the absolute pleasure of interviewing Medical Images Technologies developer Curvebeam AI. The company is set to list on the ASX with an IPO of $25 million, and the designated ticker code will be CVB. Joining me today is the CEO, Mr. Greg Brown. Welcome to Small Caps, Greg. Thanks, Jess. Thanks for having me. Sure. So, Greg, let's just delve straight in. Um, could you provide our audience with um, an overview of Curvebeam's um, intended IPO on the ASX, including the share price, the number of shares that you'll be issuing, and and the the final market capitalization? Yeah. And right now, you know, it's an IPO comprised of around um, fifty two million shares to raise twenty five million Australian at a price of 48 cents per share, which will give the company an indicative market capitalization of around 154 million. Wow, okay. So how does uh, Curvebeam AI intend to use the funds that they raise from the IPO, you know, and, and specifically what are the sort of key investment strategies or, or um, you know, investment mentioned for the IPO? Well, a lot of those funds, Jess, is really to drive our revenue growth. Last fiscal year, we came in at over 11 million, about a 55% um, growth rate with three reps. Um, this year, with our striker relationship, it gives us access to 500 reps. And to fully fund that program and to maximise our growth, um, we see about 50% of the use of funds from the 25 million will be going into sales and marketing and direct market support. So application specialists, technical support and feet on the street. We've also expanded into the German market that also has favourable reimbursement for the CT scan. So a lot of that money is going into the sales and marketing. Then we have 20% going into the next generation platform mm -hmm. and that will be the sky rise. So the high rise does the lower limbs and the Skyrise will do a total body. And Skyrise opens up the spine and the shoulder. And the spine is by far the largest market. It's about threefold larger than the knee, and shoulder is about equivalent to knee. So it's a major market expansion for us, for our strategic footprint, uh, very much in this group search and setting. So 50% going into sales and marketing, 20% for that next generation platform, and the rest go into clinical trials and IP management. Okay. Okay. Brilliant. So now let's just shift to talk about your flagship product, um, High Rise Scanner. Now, can you tell our audience about you know the unique capabilities of this product, um, and also in terms of its performance of both traditional and weight bearing CT scans? Yes. Um, look, my business partner uh, Arun Singh, uh, he was a pioneer in delivering cone beam CT to the dental offices. So he started a company in the 90s, um, went on to sell that to Danaher, but was very much the pioneer of applying cone beam CT to a point of care setting in a dental office for maxofacial imaging. What we do with the high rise product is we can now deliver CT with cone beam technology, but also functional CT with standing CT and supine CT. So what the high rise will do, and this excludes Australia. In Australia, we work through the imaging chains of IMED, Loomis, but everywhere else, you can work directly with the group surgeon practices to place the device, and they can build directly for those scans. Now, when you look at a skeleton underweight versus when you're lying down with no weight on the joint, well, Diagnostically, you see exactly what you know what is going on in that joint when it's under its natural bilateral weight. And you, you can better diagnose the conditions and at the same time better plan your surgery to keep a balanced skeleton so that post the implant, you don't have a, an imbalance in the skeleton that creates the very issue that you've just solved in the affected joint. So we see this as really groundbreaking. It's a cone beam CT. It delivers... Um, very good images. It's about, you know, 60% less in radiation than a multi-detector CT. Um, and it's really designed for that point of care in those group doctor or surgeon offices. Wow, that's fantastic. So now can you give us an indication of sort of what regulatory clearances 
you had to get over in terms of the high-rise scanner um, and, and what those approvals enable the company to do in terms of its sales and operations, both in Australia and offshore. So we have FDA, which allows us to market the product in the US. Uh, we have our striker relationship to help us do that. In Europe, we have CE MDR compliant, CE Mark, um, and we're one of you know one of the first companies to get out on front on that MDR new requirement. Um, so we can now market into France, into Germany, uh, into the main key markets of Europe, and we've made a commitment to set up our own distribution capabilities in Germany. So right now we've got it all; it's all in place. This is all about a growth story and investing in that growth through you know, allowing us to support not only the sales and marketing efforts to really place that strategic footprint, but also to um, improve our market access with spine and shoulder. That's brilliant. Now, just talking about your growth, you have an agreement with um, Striker Corporation. Now, can you discuss the significance of that co-marketing distribution agreement with them in terms of you know the market reach and also the product offering? Yeah, the firepower of Striker in their marketing muscle is significant. Um, they have 500 reps, 40 regional specialists across the US in their foot and ankle division. And right now, within that agreement, you know, Striker can buy the device from us directly and then place that into an account and they can offer financing deals where for more commitments to their products, you can bring a credit off your leasing payment uh, per month, and they always try to target a lease payment of zero per month. So it's a very attractive model for a surgeon's office to be able to place our device. So Striker really gives us that access into the marketplace and access to the surgeons. A lot of these surgeons are very busy, and often the Striker reps are in there teaching the new techniques in surgery. So their access is second to none. It'll help us get into a lot of the centers. And then, of course, um, just pure feet on the street the marketing muscle that they have. We're quite excited about the type of impact that they can, that can bring for us. And, um, you know, the wide, you know, the, the, the number one issue that we have for closing an account is getting the account over that 550000 Australian dollar upfront payment. And with this flex financing package, that's an enormous step forward for these centers. That's fantastic. Now, how has Curvebeam AI um, differentiated itself uh, from competitors, and particularly in terms of its proprietary technologies and market focus? Yeah, look, um, we've got this amazing platform. We've got two amazing platforms. So we've got the high rise, which is functional CT with weight bearing bilateral. Uh, you can also do supine. But we also have a high resolution point of care a peripheral CT device for screening for um, bone fragility. Now, we have a number of opportunities where in the total joint replacement market, 60% of the people who will present with an advanced osteoarthritis, and they're going to their orthopedic surgeon for restoration function, but 60% of them will have an undiagnosed, untreated fragility in their bone. Now, that's one of the number one risks for a failed implant due to aseptic loosening or a periprosthetic fracture. So one of the big major steps forward that we can deliver to this market on this platform is we can give the surgeon a functional CT in his office. The patient can come in once. They don't have to come in and then be referred out. They come in once. It's one scan, and then he can get both the um, diagnostic radiology of the lower limb for diagnosing the condition and planning the surgery. And they can also diagnose automatically in that setting uh, for bone mineral density and microstructure so that they can identify those patients that have an underlying fragility that needs to be treated to prevent adverse events in the total joint replacement. Now, the other big plus for us with this product, uh, Jess, is that a lot of the um, docs today, you know, with the robotic systems, the robotic surgical systems, a lot of the surgeons need a CT scan. Now, 90% of group practice offices in, in uh, orthopedic surgeries would have radiation, would have CT capability already in their office, but very few have um, CT capability. 
So they have X-ray capability, but not CT capability. So high-rise coming to market first means that one visit for the patient, one scan, they can do their diagnosis and surgical plan for restoration of function, and at the same time, bill a second scan to identify an untreated, un, sorry, an undiagnosed untreated fragility to prevent the adverse events. So we're really applying our AI to enable this management of multiple conditions. And when you think about osteoporosis and osteoarthritis, you couldn't pick two more significant burdens to the healthcare system for an aging population. Unbelievable. And I can hear your passion, Greg. So now we know that um, senior management has committed 1.5 million, which indicates a huge amount of confidence in the company's growth. Can you give our small caps audience um, some more insights into the company's growth potential and strategic vision? Yeah, look, uh, Arun and I, as the senior managers of this company, both put in 1.5, well, 1.25 million into the IPO. Um, we have, through the journey, both, you know, I've put in, in total now about 6.1 million and Arun has put in close to 15 or just over 15 million. So we have a lot of skin in the game and aligns our interests with our shareholders. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an important point that shareholders recognise that we're not asking them to take a journey that we're not significantly taking with them. So we, we like to make that point. Um, I think it's always a good sign when senior management gives that type of commitment. And then to the second part of your question, um, which was, if you could just reiterate that for me, please. Yes, yeah, so just the strategic vision. So what is this, you know, what is the company's growth and strategic vision? Okay, so right now our strategic vision is to place as many high rides in group surgeon practices across the US and Europe, Japan, China, as quickly as possible. And that strategic footprint, you know, the the instrument or the CT scanning business alone in the US represents around a $10 billion opportunity to us. Now, that is a business model where they buy the device for 550000 to 600000 Australian dollars. And we get anywhere from 53% through our distributors and striker relationship or 60% gross profit um, where we sell direct. Now, the strategic vision, though, is... If we can apply our deep learning AI applications to automate existing tests that are already covered and reimbursed, but now takes it out of the realm of a trained operator in a totally different imaging center to be able to do a BMD with a DEXA, now off that one scan, one patient visit, the doctor can do his diagnosis, surgical plan, and find out the other conditions that he needs to plan his surgery around for that patient. So for us, strategically, that strategic footprint of every placement and then the BMD module, we believe that'll represent around 150 to 200,000 per year and a 90% gross profit on the SAS model of delivering those automated you know, routine uh, tests. Okay. So that's our strategic vision. It really does reduce a lot of the adverse events and at the same time delivers a nice revenue stream for the doctor and gives an improved workflow in that setting where one scan, one visit, one scan, two billings, uh, and then they can upload straight into their robotic systems, their custom cut guides, and at the same time have a complete diagnosis of an undiagnosed, untreated fragility and get a second payment for that. That's brilliant. So now we've spoken about your strategic vision. Let's talk about, you know, the main markets or medical fields that Curvebeam AI is specifically targeting. And, you know, also the company's technology, how it addresses, you know, those specific initial needs of those areas. So the main markets right now um, is the group surgeon office setting. Yeah. Now, when we say a group surgeon office setting, if you look at just an individual orthopedic surgeon practice in the US today, there's around 10,000. But if you break that down into multiple surgeon office setting, so two or greater, then you're looking at around 5,500 group practices. Sure. And that group practice you know, sees around 50 to 100 patients a day. And so that is our main market. And that's where the Medtronics, the Strikers, the J&Js, the 
um, you know, all the major orthopedic vendors, Smith and Nephew, Anovis, uh, Arthrex, all want that relationship directly with that surgeon. And our product delivers that access to that call point. So for us, you know, being able to establish that footprint directly in that group office setting, uh, we see that as a, a major strategic asset for us going forward to leverage all of our AI solutions on those SaaS-based annuities. That's fantastic. Now, you've got two really great products. Let's talk about research and development. So I know I've read that Curvebeam AI has, you know, is continuing to invest into research and development. So what are the sort of anticipated outcomes of those, those programs? So we've got the high rise. Skyrise is the next product, which does the whole body. So that gives you spine and shoulder. So that's a big R&D project for us. And then applying our deep learning AI algorithms into better identifying fragility. And we just published an eLife publication on a deep learning AI algorithm based off our HRPQCT product. Um, and it shows, I think, groundbreaking uh, application from a large uh, cohort in Europe where we were able to uh, build a deep learning AI algorithm by a three-dimensional matrix um, where you identified women who went on to fracture versus women who did not fracture. It was a cohort of around 2,000 women. There was around four scans over an eight-year period. And we were able to do a deep learning AI algorithm. So very much on the forefront of deep learning AI. Um, and we just published that in Eli. Excuse me. I've just got a runny nose. Apologies. Oh, not at all, Greg. That time so, I'm so they're the two key areas that we're focusing our research and development on at the moment, Jess. That is, yeah, incredible. Now, just talking about research and development. Now, we know that the high-rise devices have been already placed into some of the world's most renowned medical institutions. Can you share some details about, um, you know, the adoption and the impact of those devices, um, not just in the medical community, but also, you know, in the US and internationally? Yeah, and, and most of our key opinion uh, leader sites are in Europe and the US. So we have several in Germany and France. Um, but for the US key institutions, you've got all three clinics of Mayo have one of the th three generations of our weight bearing CT, UCSF, Harvard, um, HSS. Um, there are a number of key institutions that we can quote that utilize the technology and you know including you know duke um so they're all you know ivy league uh, recognized kol sites and they've been very much helping us to pioneer these weight bearing ct applications and we'll be looking to these sites to also really help us pioneer the um applications in um ai going forward as well that's brilliant. Now, Greg, thank you so much for your time. I just have one last question for you, and that is, can you give our Small Caps audience two or three key takeaways as to why they should be attracted to investing into Curvebeam AI? Yeah, Curvebeam AI is all about investing in our growth, establishing that strategic footprint of high rise uh, across the globe. Um, we've targeted areas that have favourable reimbursement, not only for the CT scan, but for our first SaaS-based annuity being BMD, CT off the high rise. So we've really de-risked both on the regulatory, the reimbursement front. This is a story about investing in growth now, establishing that footprint, and then overlaying that high profit annuity stream going forward. We're very excited about it. Um, we feel that uh, our journey will have its challenges, but we're excited about what we have in front of us. And I think it always speaks volumes when the senior management puts significant skin in the game with their investors. Absolutely. Could not agree more. Thank you so much for your time, Greg. Um, and good Thank luck, you, all the best for your IPO and ASX listing this week. And, you know, I really look forward to welcoming you back on Small Caps. Thanks very much, Jess.